Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys this edit and workflow that I built that helps me scrape unlimited amount of tweets from X. There's a ton of good stuff that you can find on X, whether it's market analysis, competitor analysis, or just staying up to date with the latest news and trends in a specific industry. So the system is gonna help you do all of that. And as always, I'm giving away the workflow as well as the Google Sheet template for free. So all you need to do is download those things, plug them in, hit run, and you'll be scraping Twitter. All you have to do to get those resources is join my free school community. The link for that's down in the description, but let's not waste any time. Let's hop into a live demo and then I'll show you guys how to set up this API step-by-step. Step. As you can see, here's the workflow that we're going over today. Quick disclaimer, I don't know if this is optimal the way we have these different sets and code nodes. So if any of you guys are programmers, please let me know how I can um, make this more efficient. But anyways, it works, right? So we're scraping X up here. We're gonna be checking the count and right now I'm just having it only go three runs through. Um, if you wanted to increase that, you'd have to change the number here as well as increase the sort of count code right here. But if we haven't gone through three times, it's gonna come down here. We're just going to be setting the variables, increasing the count. We have to set the pagination and then we're gonna loop back through and we're just gonna keep scraping Twitter until we've done that three times. And then that's the end of the process. But as you can see, we're updating a Google Sheet right here, which has these specific columns like the tweet ID, the URL, the content, likes, retweets, replies, quotes, views, and the date of the tweet. So we're gonna hop back into the workflow. I'm gonna hit test workflow and we'll see this happen live. So right now it's hitting Twitter or X. Now we're extracting the info, adding it to the sheet, and then you're gonna see it loop all the way back down here. We're once again hitting the API again. We're doing the second round of scraping, adding that to the sheet. As you can see, there's 38 total items. So there's 38 tweets. And this is gonna be the last run. We have 58 tweets. And then it's gonna go off this way because we are done. So that just finished up. We can click into our Google Sheet and you can see now that we have 58 tweets to look through. Each of them, of course, have the URL. So if I clicked into this one, we could see we have a tweet right here. OpenAI, your turn. Can you give this man a luscious full head of hair and a nice haircut? Looks great. So as you can see, if I was to scroll down, we would see that we in fact have 58 tweets. All of them have an ID along with the link. So if we clicked into this one, we could see this was on March 11th and it has almost 31,000 views. So if we click into it, and we wait for it to load, it's on March 11th and it has almost 31,000 views. So we know that we're actually getting real information into our data sheet. And um, yeah, so let's break down what's going on. Okay, so I told you guys that we were gonna walk through setting up that API call step by step. So we're gonna do that. And then I'll walk through this actual execution right here and we'll take a look at what was going on. All right, so this is the API that we're gonna be using. It's called twitterapi.io. And I'm sure you guys are wondering about the price. It's really not too bad. As you can see, it's sort of a pay as you go model and you can get a thousand tweets for 15 cents. So it's really not too bad. Also, I have a link for this down in the description. And if you use that specific link, you'll get $6 to start with. I think if you sign up normally, you only get one. So you'll get five free extra dollars to play with. Anyways, this is the API we're gonna be using to access the Twitter data. I'm gonna click on docs, which is the API documentation for the different endpoints that we can hit and basically the, the different functionality of what we can do using this API. So let's take a quick glance at the left. We have user endpoint actions, which would mean we were looking at a specific user wanting to get their tweets, their followers, their mentions. We have tweet endpoints, which means that we can um, grab an ID of a tweet. So over here you see for every tweet we have an ID. We could grab you know, tweets by ID, we could grab their replies, their retweeters, or what we were doing in the demo was just doing an advanced search where we were searching for tweets based on a query. Okay, so I know that API documentation and setting up these requests can be kind of intimidating. I'm gonna try to break it down as simple as possible. Okay, the first thing I wanna point out is whenever you're looking at API documentation, if you see curl commands on the right, which would look like this, you're gonna to wanna to copy that and go into a new workflow, type in HTTP request, and all you're gonna to wanna to do is hit import curl, paste that in there, and when you click import, it's going to populate the fields that you need. So it's gonna be really handy. This one's not too bad because it's a simple get request with pretty much just authorization here. But in the case of you know sending over a post request and you have to do a full JSON body um, and setting up those parameters, it's gonna be really helpful if you're able to just import that curl and everything's set up. Okay, so the first thing that we notice is our method and our URL. So if I hop back into the documentation, we can see that right here we have a method, which is git, and then this is sort of the endpoint. So if we were to copy this endpoint and come back into here and paste it, it would give us that full endpoint. So I just pasted exactly what we copied. Um, and basically what happens is we have like sort, some sort of base URL. So we're accessing the Twitter API.io API, and then every single function has a different endpoint. So because right now we're doing advanced search, that's what it looks like. If we were doing, um, you know, get user info, the endpoint would be Twitter slash user slash info. So as you can see, all of these are going to have different endpoints, which basically just says, hey, we're reaching out to the server and we want to do something different. 
So then what comes next is going to be authorization. And that just means, you know, you made an account, you have an API key, you're paying for this search, not someone else. So right here we can see authorization. We have sort of a key value pair. The key is going to be x-api-key, and then the actual value is going to be your API key. And what's important to notice here is that this is a header auth. Sometimes they're query auths, sometimes they're headers. In this case, we have a header. And so what you need to do is go to your dashboard in the top right, you'll click on your profile, your dashboard, and then you'll have an API key right there to copy. Copy that, and then we'll bring it into N8N. So as you remember, the key was x-api-key, and the value was your actual API key. So this is basically saying, this is a placeholder, this is where you'll put in your API key. Now what we can do, that's a really cool tip with N8N, is instead of filling it out here in the header parameters, we're gonna do this up here under the authentication tab, which basically just means we're able to save this authentication and use it for later. And this is why you needed to remember that this is going to be a header auth. So I'm gonna click on this button, I'm gonna click on general credential type, and then within the general auth type, we're gonna be choosing header because that's what we saw in the documentation. So header. And now all we have to do is, as you can see, mine is already configured, but I'm gonna pretend like I'm creating a new one. We have a key value pair like we talked about. So in this case, it was x-api-key, um, and all caps. And then for the value, you're just gonna paste in your API key that you just grabbed from Twitter API.io. And then you can just basically save this so then you have it forever. So I'm just gonna call this one Twitter demo. We're saving the credential. It's connected successfully. And now, I, as you can see, I have all these different APIs that I already have saved. So when I wanna set up a request in the future, I don't have to go find it, put it in here as a header auth. I just have it saved already. So I'm gonna flick off send headers because we're sending a header right here. And now let's go back to the documentation and see what else we need to configure. Okay, so we're back to the advanced search endpoint. We can see that we have two required fields that we need to put in, which is gonna be a query and a query type. So the query is like what we're actually searching Twitter for. So in that first example, my query was OpenAI, and I'll show you guys that later. But that means it's gonna be searching Twitter for OpenAI. And then we have a query type, which basically means you have two options. You can either say latest tweets or top tweets. So what I did in the demo was top tweets. As you could tell, they were all um, very, um, very high performing with, with the views and the likes, but they're still gonna be pulling recently. So these were all tweets, you know, still within, here's March 8th, so that was about a week ago, um, but mainly they're still gonna be pretty recent as you can see. Okay, so anyways, for query we have a string and for query type we have a string, but we only have two options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flick on send query parameters and we know the first one was called query. And for this example, let's just do Manus because you know that dropped and everyone's talking about it. And then we're gonna add another one, which we know was query type, I think with a capital T. Let's just go make sure. Query type with a capital T and it has to be either latest or top. So for this example, let's do latest rather than doing top. Okay, so that's what we have here. Um, and then as you can tell in the demo, we have one more option, which is cursor. Um, and we're not gonna set that up right now, but this is basically how you paginate through requests. Up here it says that um, each page returns exactly, exactly about, that's kind of weird wording, but each page returns about 20 tweets. And if you want more, like in the demo, we got 58 because we went through three times. So we're gonna leave that blank for now and we should be set up. So I'm gonna hit test step. We're gonna see it's gonna be searching now through Twitter and we're gonna get one item. And if I just move this over a little bit, we can see we have one item with this is a total of, looks like this only got a 16 total tweets because this is um, number 15 and computers start counting from zero. But anyways, this one got us 16 tweets. So I'm just gonna pin this data so we don't have to rerun the API. We have this to play with. And let's just take a look at one of the tweets. So here we have the ID of the tweet and the URL. Let's search Google for this and we'll see that it should be a recent tweet about Manus. Um, let's translate this. I can't fetch the translation, so let's try another. Well, it's from a user named Manus Eric, so maybe that's what happened. Okay, maybe let's try something else. I'm gonna type in college basketball, and we'll try this. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna unpin the data. Yes, I do, so we can do another run, and then we'll see if we just wanna validate some tweets. Okay, let's, let's go over here and pin this, and we will copy this link right here and go to X and see what we got. So college basketball betting, this one came out 541, which is right now's current time, so that's the latest tweet. Okay, so we have a ton of data coming back, right? And it's all in one item. So what we wanna do is clean this up and extract the fields that we're looking for. So I'm going to paste in this code node right here, which you can get by joining my free school community. The link for that's in the description. You'll click on YouTube resources, click on the post associated with this video, and I'll have a text file right here for the actual code that's within the code node. Or of course, you could download the workflow um, where you download this JSON, you come into N8N, hit import from file up here, and then you'll have the whole workflow with all the code nodes and everything.
So of course, this is the workflow that you'll actually be downloading. And if you wanna really understand what's going on within this workflow and the, the looping and the setting fields, then I would definitely recommend you join my paid community. The link for that is also down in the description. It's really just a more hands-on approach to learning N8N and having deep discussions about what's going on. We have a full classroom about building agents, vector databases, APIs, and HTTP requests, as well as step-by-step -step builds. This is definitely not a place for experts only. My whole goal of the channel is to make things as simple as possible. So um, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, then definitely hop in here. Okay, anyway, so I'm just gonna plug in the code node and then it's already configured. Basically what we're saying is out of this item with, it could have 15 tweets, it could have 20 tweets. Every time what we wanna do is just basically pull all the objects out and get what we want. So actually in this case, we have 23 tweets. Um, so this one's different than that first one, right? And as you can see for each one, we've now extracted a tweet ID, a URL, the actual content, the light count, the view count. And as you can see, all of these were just recently posted. So they're very low on views, except for this one actually. Kind of went crazy this one was from march 6th so not sure what happened there that was almost two weeks ago now but um anyways this is our twitter data so what's next from here is putting that into a google sheet so i'm going to grab a google sheet node all the way down here um we're going to do a pen row and sheet or it's going to be a pen rows but we will choose our actual sheet which is going to be twitter data we'll choose the sorry the document now we're choosing the sheet which is sheet one and now what we have to do is map the columns. So because we were able to extract all of these columns that we want, it's gonna be super easy. It's just as simple as dragging in the values that we need to send over to the columns in our Google Sheet. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna delete all 58 items over here so we can just start from scratch. And now we can see, we have to basically tell N8N what values am I putting in each of these cells right here. So back in the N8N workflow, I'm gonna grab tweet ID from the left, from the code node, and just drag it into the tweet ID column. I'm gonna grab URL, drag it into the URL column. and just gonna do all that all the way down. We made it in this order, so it's just really intuitive to drag um, exactly, like I said, in this order. So you can also get the template for this Google Sheet in the free school community, um, just so you can basically plug this thing in right away and get going. But we have um, pretty much everything. One thing also I did in the code node was we formatted the date to look a little more human readable. But now we have that done, and it's going to be doing that for all 23 items coming through. And if I hit play, and then we'll go over to here, we'll basically just watch all 23 tweets pop into this workflow, or sorry, the sheet. So as you can see, there they are. We have all of the links are clickable. So let's click into this one real quick, just to verify. There we go. We have some, um, looks like women's college basketball. Nice bucket there. Anyways, that is pretty much the first step of, we scraped, we extracted, and we put it into a Google Sheet. So from there, I was thinking, okay, that's cool, but we only got 23 items. What if we you know, want to put this on a scheduled trigger where every morning we are scraping you know, AI news and we want every morning to just get like 100 tweets put into a Google Sheet? What we had to do was look at how the pagination works. So as you remember in the API documentation, it says use cursor for pagination. If we see the cursor parameter, it says the cursor to paginate through the results, first page is just basically an empty string. This is basically what we just built out. These three nodes where we're getting tweets, extracting info, and adding it to the sheet. But now what we have to do is set up a parameter in here that is the cursor. And it's not just a simple pagination where it's like page zero, page one, page two. We have to grab a value. And so what we're, we're grabbing here is the output of the actual tweet extraction or tweet scraping. There's a value called next cursor. So item one, basically says this was the first page and if you put this page in another request, you get page two. And then on page two, we get a different cursor which basically says, okay, now you can put this cursor in and you'll get page three. And as you can see, they basically get longer each time. So I think that it's just adding a chunk on each time and saying, hey, let's get the next page now. So we had to bake in some other logic here. So I'm just gonna break down what's going on in order. Okay, so the first thing that we did was we set a count. And basically I came in here and I hard coded count to equal number one. And this is important because we need this number to work off of. And this is where I said, you know, if you're a coder or a programmer and this is not the way to do it, let me know. But this is how I got it to work. So anyways, we're setting number one. And then in the next node, which is the counter, we're feeding in the actual count from the previous node, as well as the cursor, which will come from down here. So eventually the count and cursor will both come from down here. But to start with on the first run, we're just grabbing count from the previous node, which would be one and then we're gonna feed that in the rest of the process. Okay, then we move on to the API call where we're going to be scraping Twitter. First thing that you notice is it's pretty much the same right here as the step-by-step -step example. We have our endpoint, we have our method, we have our credential, we have our query, which was open AI, and we have our query type, which was top, rather than, or then we have our query type, which was top, so searching for top tweets. 
And then we have our cursor, which we didn't have in the step-by-step -step example. But what I'm gonna show you guys is if we go to run number one, there would have been no cursor being fed in. So on the left, you can see what was fed in, which was counter was one at this point and cursor was null. So basically it was saying, okay, regular request. I'm just hitting, um, looking for top results for OpenAI. Then if we go to run two, we can see on the left what happened is we now have a cursor and we now have the counter equals two. So this is run number two, we're feeding in the cursor and we're getting different tweets over here. And finally, run number three, on the left, we can see the counter went up to three, the cursor is now much longer, and we feed that back into the request right away because we're able to always say json.cursor, which means we're always looking here. And so this is a concept that's kind of hard to explain. We're basically looping everything back together because otherwise we'd be referencing some sort of absolute node, which it'd be hard to say we want the most recent cursor, not the first time we got one. So that's why we have to have this counter node, which is really important that says, okay, Whatever I'm getting is going to be the most recent count and also the most recent cursor. So as you know, we were getting big items coming out of the API call and then we have to extract them. So exact same code that we used in the step-by-step, -step, we are getting three different runs. Run one had 18, run two had 20, and run three had 20, which is a total of 58. And then we're just adding to them to the Google Sheet, exact same way we did that earlier, except for we're doing it one at a time. So 18 first, all the way back, 20, all the way back, then 20 more. What's going on over here when we're checking for the count is we basically just have a simple if, and we're trying to check if the count is equal to three, then we're gonna basically end the process. And the way we're able to do this is once again, we're referencing that counter node, which is this one that we're feeding back for the most recent count and cursor. So we're able to look here, as you can see, this one ran three times, run one, um, it, was, it was false because the counter was, was one, run two, it was false because the counter was two, and then on run three, it finally became true because the counter on this run was three. So we're just sending it off to a no operation node, which literally just does nothing. And if they're false, it's gonna loop all the way back down here. So the first thing I'm doing here is just setting it to one item, only because whatever leaves this branch is gonna be either 18 items, 20 items, however many tweets were pulled back. So I just wanted to set it to one to keep things cleaner. Then what I did was I set the increase. So basically I grabbed um, the counter from, from earlier, and which, which would be the most recent count. So we're setting it back to two, but we're setting it dynamically here so that the code node can bump it up by one. And then exact same thing with cursor, we're grabbing cursor from the get tweets node um, in order to feed it back in later. So here you can see run one, the counter was one, um, and then later gets bumped up to two. On run two, what was coming in was two, and then it gets bumped up to three. And you notice each time the cursor also increased. From there, it's a code node that obviously, disclaimer, all of these code nodes I had Claude 3.7 write for me. So like I said, maybe not optimal, but it's working. We have the counter coming in at two and then we're outputting it called count and it's going up one, as you can see. So on run one, it was coming in as one, it came out as two. On run two, coming in as two, came out as three. From there, all we're doing is we're setting it one more time. So I know there's lots of sets going on, but we're setting it because we need to be able to pull it in dynamically and always have this node be able to reference it as json.count or json.cursor because remember earlier we passed it in as a hard-coded variable so it needs to be able to say okay I can either look here or here based on whichever one has most recently been activated. All right so that's basically it. I'm definitely aware that this concept of dynamically setting all these things is a little bit confusing but what I would definitely recommend is you know download this template, run it, and just look in there and explore and see how it's actually being able to reference things. The key thing to remember here is that when you're referencing a variable, like let's let's just go back into here. When you're referencing something and you use dollar sign JSON, it's looking for whatever is the most immediate node coming beforehand. And otherwise, if you're doing something like right here, where in this case, we're referencing the counter node or we're referencing the get tweets node. That's a lot different because it's like an absolute reference. So when we use a dollar sign JSON, it's just gonna give us a lot more flexibility by being able to reference whatever came previously before. So we know we're getting the most up-to-date information. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys learned something new. As always, if you did, please give it a like. It definitely helps me out a ton. And I always appreciate you guys making it to the end of the videos. Definitely let me know in the comments what else you guys wanna see, some other use cases. As you know, there's a ton more we can do with this Twitter API because we can, now that we have the IDs of both the users and the actual tweet, we can look up so much other stuff. So generating lead lists, stuff like that. But yeah, that's gonna be it. Really appreciate you guys once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.